Welcome everyone to day 11 of the 12 days of anime. The final day because I decided to make my Christmas video day 12 even though that was only the 10th one but whatever. Today I want to talk about some of the underrated shows I've seen in the past year. This was an idea I came up with about five minutes before starting to write this video because none of my other ideas were working out. I thought about talking about the new SAO season but still ongoing and I, so I don't really have like a concrete point I want to make. I thought about talking about Maho Shoujo's site, but my thoughts on that are too complicated for a single video. I also thought about talking about Banana Fish, but I'm also only halfway through it, so I don't have a final opinion yet, plus it's honestly too mediocre to dedicate a whole video to. I even thought about doing like Isekai as a whole, or a video about how sexual assault and rape are portrayed in anime, but those would take a lot more time than a quick video to, that I would make in about a day. Let me know if those interest you though, and I'll consider it for later. Anyway, when I was thinking about the 12 days, what I like doing here is to highlight some of my favorite anime, and especially those that might not be talked about. So what better way to wrap up the 12 days than talk about some underrated shows I saw this year. And this list will be both anime that came out this past year and older anime that I saw the past year, so hopefully a good variety there. Also, the list is unranked. I basically just went in the order that I saw them, so yeah, number one isn't better than number two or anything. Alright, let's get into the list. Number one is The Night is Short, Walk on Girl, and this is a movie from the director Masaki Yuasa, filled with his trademark style that you're probably familiar with if you've seen things like Tatami Galaxy or Devil Man Cry Baby. The movie itself is a fun adventure comedy romance and it's all about living life to the fullest as a lot of weird and absurd things happen around the main character. It really is just a blend of fun, but also a message about enjoying what life gives you when it gives you stuff that make absolutely no sense. So yeah, if you want a fun movie, give this one a try. Number two, Anime Guitarist. Okay, I almost forgot about this show until I was going through my mouth, and yeah, this one is completely awesome. Uh, but what makes it awesome is actually a big spoiler, so just trust me on that. It starts off as a sort of fun comedy slice of life about an anime club and just celebrating anime through everything it does. It goes off the rails a bit near the end, that I will definitely admit, but it does so in a very unique way that even if it didn't handle the ideas perfectly, I was just glad that it exists and did something in such a unique way. So give this a try because there's nothing else like it. Number three, Yuki Yuna is a hero. This dark magical girl show is another great one. It's similar in some ways to others of its genre like Madoka, but it has a lighthearted slice of life to balance out the dark storytelling, and this sort of balance is one of my favorite things to see in anime. And I also love the focus on the characters and what they fight for. And dark magical girl shows are probably my favorite subgenre in anime, so yeah, I was bound to like this one. So if you like a blend of cute fun and dark stories, definitely give this one a try. Number four is Handshakers. Yes, I actually like this show. While the ambition the studio had with its animation definitely exceeded their talent, I really appreciate the unique look and style of the show, and it led to some just plain cool looking action scenes. I also enjoyed the stories of the various characters as we learn about the dreams that they want to fight for, and what happens when that dream is taken from them. It is not perfect. It is very far from perfect, in fact. But it is a show that I still found myself enjoying getting into it. So. I would advise you not to just dismiss the show because the community doesn't like it, because you might miss out on something you enjoy. Number five is Children of the Whales. This is another one that I love and wish it was better, if that makes sense. It's a story of these people living on a giant whale sort of thing that makes its way across the desert. It has a fascinating world, a really cool art style, and a lot of interesting ideas to explore. Sadly, it ended incomplete, but even so, it's one of my favorite anime from 2017, and I just want more. I want to share with you how much I like it. Maybe I should try to find the manga. I'm not really into it, but this story I want to see fully. Number six is Fake Lead. This is how you do pure stupid fun right, and it's filled with great action. I've only seen the first season, but it was enough to make me want more, so that's why I watched the first episode of season 3 last night with Garfield. By the way, hi Garfield. Go check out uh, their ReZero podcast that he and C Tactics do. So yeah, if you want a fun twist to fate, or a show about magic lollies with explosions, give Khalid a try. Or if you want Yuri Lolly fan service, give this a try. 
It has both, for good or bad. Anyway, number seven is Simple Gear. This is how you do pure stupid fun right, filled with a lot of great action. While I've only seen the first two seasons, it was enough to make me want more. So if you want a fun show about magical idols with great explosions and music, give this a try. And no, I did not just copy and paste these last two by mistake. They're just both insanely fun shows. But speaking of awesome music, Children of the Whales has an awesome OP. Oh wait, that was two entries ago. Whatever, let's move on to the next show. Number eight is Maho Shoujo Sight. Again, we have a dark magical girl show, and in some ways the darkest one I've seen, but that is part of the reason why I like it so much. In this world, it is the pain and suffering that allows these girls to become magical girls, so as you can imagine, they're all quite a bit messed up. But the show also shows them overcoming their pain and suffering to fight for a bigger cause than themselves, which is just great. Plus, the one villain is just pure amazing. Seriously, he steals every scene he is in, especially when he really gets going. And he's enough reason to watch the show alone. But there are lots of other good reasons, too. This show may be overly dark and edgy for some, but if that's not something that will bother you, give it a try. You'll probably like it quite a lot. Number nine is Happy Sugar Life, which is another messed up and twisted show about love of all kinds. It follows a teenager who kidnaps a girl because of her love for said girl, and the plot shows the desperate and messed up things a person will do because of love. I really like how it has a blend of the dark storytelling and messed up characters with some really cute moments, which make the cute moments horrifying. So I think this is even my favorite horror anime series. That's not quite what I would think of as horror, though I guess more in the psychological sense, but whatever. Give this one a try. It is one of my top anime of the year for good reason. And that brings us to number 10, Detroit Metal City. This show is basically a parody of all the death metal stereotypes. It has a kind-hearted main character who somehow becomes a singer for a death metal band, and he is forced to embrace everything that this role entails. And they've performed the most vulgar songs you can think of, so hilarity ensues. It's hard to describe it any better than going and watching the first episode, because that will tell you all you need to about the show. So yeah, go watch the first episode, experience it for yourself, and have fun. So yeah, that's been 10 underrated anime I saw this past year, and let me know if any of these interest you. And let me know what are some underrated shows that you've seen recently that you think I should check out. You probably have a decent idea of my taste from this because I like fun shows and I like dark and messed up shows. Interesting combination, I know. Regardless, I will see you next weekend for my beginning of my year in review videos. That will be fun. Oh yeah, and before I go, Planet With is number 11. I almost forgot that, so go check it out. I've only seen like half of it, but that was good. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.